In this video, we are going to be covering the topics in Chapter 12, which are discussions on the functional groups, alcohols, thiols, ethers, aldehydes, and ketones. First, we're going to be discussing the functional groups that contain oxygen atoms and sulfur atoms. So when it comes to the functional groups, remember that an alcohol is going to be any molecule that contains a hydroxyl group. And a hydroxyl group, as you can see, is an OH group. So an example of an alcohol is going to be methanol. An ether is going to be a compound that has a single bond oxygen bonded to carbon atoms on either side. And as you can see, this CH3 bonded to oxygen bonded to CH3 is an example of an ether. Lastly, we have thiols, and thiols are going to contain an SH group. And as you can see, here we have an ethyl group bonded to an SH group, and that's an example of a thiol. First, we are going to be discussing how to name alcohols. When it comes to naming alcohols, understand that in the IUPAC system, we're going to replace the E in the alkane name with the ending OL. So anytime that we have an alcohol, the ending, I'm just going to highlight in magenta, is going to be OL. So there are some common names for when alkyl groups are bonded to a hydroxyl group. So, for example, the common names for these alcohols, so CH3OH and CH3CH2OH, will be methyl alcohol and ethyl alcohol, which basically it tells you that what you have is the alkyl name plus the word alcohol. Now we're going to be discussing the IUPAC rules for naming alcohols. So similar to what we have seen in other functional groups, understand that the first step naming, when naming any functional group in organic chemistry is that you're going to find the longest carbon chain. It's just that at this point, you need to find the longest carbon chain that includes the carbon that is bonded to the OH group. We're going to be writing the alkane name for the molecule, and we're going to replace the E in the alkane name with OL. So, for example, in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. The alkane name is going to be hexane for a six carbon alkane. We're going to erase the E and we're going to write OL for designating that this is an alcohol. As you can see, I already, in a way, took care of step two, which we're going to be numbering the chain starting at the end that is near the carbon that it has, uh, the OH group. So that's why I started numbering this from right to left. We have to give the location okay, and the name for each of the substituents relative to the OH. Understand that whenever we're naming the alcohols, you have to give the location for the hydroxyl. That's why when we look at the name of this compound, which is 5-methyl-2-hexanol, okay, this represents the longest carbon chain let me just erase this that includes the carbon bonded to the OH group, the number two is the number of carbon 
that is attached to OH in the 5 methyl represents the substituent that we have on that carbon. Now, we are going to be looking at some of the examples that we have in the worksheet. I specifically will work on the first two. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is highlight the longest carbon chain. So, as you can see, I'm going to start here. I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So that means that if I write the alkane name, it's going to be pentane. I'm going to erase the E, put OL. I'm going to give the location okay, of the OL. So when I number this, I have to give or start numbering from the end that is near the carbon that is attached to the OH. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five. So on carbon one is where our OH is sitting and we only have one substituent, which is on carbon four. So the complete name for that structure is four methyl one pentanol. Let's look at the next example. If we find the longest carbon chain, we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means that we have heptane as the alkane name. We're going to erase the E, put an OL. If I number my longest carbon chain starting from the end that is nearest the carbon that is holding the OH, then this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on carbon two is where my OL, my uh, hydroxyl group is. And then I have one substituent on carbon four. I have a bromine. So it's four bromo, two heptanol. The next thing that we have to remind ourselves is naming phenols. So when it comes to naming phenols, this is going to be following the rules of how we determine the naming for aromatic compounds, in other words, arenes. So understand that your longest carbon chain is going to be the motif of the phenol. So that's going to be the last word when we're naming these. Then when we are numbering, as you can see in the structure, carbon one is going to be the carbon in the benzene ring that is holding the OH. And then we're going to be numbering the ring clockwise or counterclockwise to give the substituents the lowest number. In this case, we only have one substituent. So on carbon three, we have a bromine. So when it comes to thiols, you guys are not responsible for knowing how thiols are named, but at least I want to introduce the idea of thiol groups. Understand that thiols are going to be molecules that contain a sulfur atom, but specifically they're going to be containing a single bond sulfur hydrogen group. Okay. Many of the strong smell, smells out there, and sometimes they're not too pleasant, are going to be coming from thiols. So the smells of smelly cheese, onions, garlic, oysters, and even skunk spray come from molecules that contain an SH group. The next functional group that we are going to be dealing with are ethers. And when it comes to ethers, remember that we're going to have an oxygen atom that is going to be sitting in between two carbon groups. These carbon groups can be alkyl or they can be aromatic rings. Remember, because this oxygen atom is sitting in between those carbons and the normal bonding pattern for oxygen is two bonds and two lone pairs, 
When we look at ethers, they have a bent structure. Remember that they are tetrahedral bent. So they kind of look like water. <clears throat> now, understand that whenever we have an ether, the way that we name it is that we just place the names of the alkyl groups that are attached to the single bond oxygen in alphabetical order, okay, just to name them. So let's actually look at the example. Even though there's an IUPAC <clears throat> rule for naming ethers, in this course, you guys are only responsible for knowing how to do the common names of ethers. So as you can see, when it comes to naming, you are going to be writing the substituent names that are attached to the single bond oxygen, and then you're going to put them in alphabetical order. So the structure that we have on the slide, as you can see, we have a methyl group to your left, a propyl group to your right, and then we're going to put those two names in alphabetical order. So the name of this compound is going to be methyl propyl ether. So for ethers, the naming is always going to end in ether. Let's do some examples from the worksheet. I'm going to do the first two. So if we look at the first structure, and if I write in, because they are at this point skeletal, <clears throat> the molecule, so the substituent that is towards the left of the molecule contains one, two, three carbon atoms. So this is a propyl group. To the right of the molecule, we have one, two carbons, so that is an ethyl group. And because this is an ether, I know that that is going to be the last word in the name. And then I'm going to put those substituents in alphabetical order. So this is ethyl, propyl, ether. If I look at the second molecule, I have a benzene ring directly attached to oxygen, and that oxygen is also attached to uh, a substituent that looks like a Y. So this substituent to the left that looks like a Y has one, two, three carbons. That is called an isopropyl group. Whenever we have a benzene ring directly attached to an oxygen atom, as we have in this example, this group is known as a phenyl group. Understand that phenyl represents when we have a benzene ring as a substituent and a benzo group is going to be something else. A benzo group is where we have a benzene ring attached to a CH2 and the CH2 is what's attached to the main chain. So this is a benzene ring attached to a CH2 group <clears throat> and the CH2 is attached to in this case the oxygen atom. So the name of this ether is going to be isopropyl phenyl ether.